Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a small haunted house. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Starting off, we need a shape. However, we don't make any measurements even amounts, but it's still possible. Or at least make sure these areas here are odd. And then, of course, don't make it a square. If you make it a square or rectangle, you're going to have a little bit of a bad time. Instead, try mashing two shapes together. Although it's not the most crazy two shapes, though it's better than nothing. And now, you want it to go all up to a consistent layer. I'm going to have this one elevated a bit above the ground, so that way, you don't need to have a perfectly flat area. You know, a little bit of a challenge. And then, from here, make it go possibly three blocks above ground. Right here, it's going to be a bit taller. And then, we're going to have a little bit of a balcony at the very front, and a staircase going up and down. Which means this build will also have a basement. Right here, I have a little bit more done on the foundation. You can see how there's deep slate bricks. Remember to texture these using stairs, slabs, and cracked blocks. And then a lower level, which is comprised of blackstone. Do some more texturing down here. And here's something else you'll want to do. Make sure that the edges are rounded. You can see here by rounding them off, they're simply more appealing and less flat. You can also do a wizard tower if you want, but I might not follow through with this because that's really difficult, and if I can't do it right, then why should I make a tutorial on it? With that out of the way, continue doing some texturing. Right here, I have very limited stuff. There's cracked block. You might want to do a layer of tuff on the inside, so that way, on the parts where there's upside down stairs with improper orientations and then slabs, you can see tough behind it as if that's the interior foundation. Right here, you can see the blackstone and the deep slate are all messed up, which is exactly what we want. While I said it's a haunted house, in reality it's more like a downscaled witch's house, but still, if you make a few small changes with cobwebs here and there, you can easily make it a haunted house. And either way, it's a spooky house. Now, what you want to do is start lining it with some dark oak. Don't forget to include some stairs and slabs to make it more interesting. In those rounded parts, you can quite easily turn into balcony. Originally, I was going to say make these flower beds, but since I'm on 121 and do not have the pale forest, I can't exactly make that work. However, later tutorials in Halloween will be using pale stuff. So, if you want, you can always substitute some blocks for those. Anyways, start off with some dark oak at the bottom, and then when you have your large spruce walls, don't forget to incorporate some of the log, or the stripped one, into it. That way, it's less monotonous. Don't forget the normal logs still exist, even if you like using the stripped version like me, and then you want to continue the dark oak all the way around. Try to avoid segmenting your build, as in dividing it into a quadrant like this. Sure, it might look good, but it's a very overused style. Try avoiding it if you can. And then, use some stairs here and there in order to make it fit. Then remove some unnecessary logs. What do you know? This area is looking pretty cute. This piece here is not necessary yet. This is only for me to get a good idea where the roof is going to go which I'm going to be doing in a few clips. With those logs added, I've now done a small amount of the interiors for, and then I did the roofs. You can see, although it looks really pretty, isn't much to it actually. All I did was block stair, block stair, block stair. Very simple stuff. Put a layer of dark oak slabs right here to act as a transition barrier. And then right here, this roof is going to have to conform to something else, that being the tower, which means it needs to cut off accordingly. Luckily, it's not actually too drastic, so you're not going to have to make too many changes to your roof in order to make this fit. Either way, what you want to do is, well, decorate the walls, do more of your logs, make an entrance, I recommend a staircase, and then do a porch. Maybe something like this, maybe use different blocks though. 
Perhaps these are actually stairs and slabs, who knows. But you should have a porch with an overhang in order to avoid having to do this. Yes, it looks pretty, but it's a very easy style that can be overly relied on. Which means, if possible, try to avoid it and come up with different concepts. Of course, if you're new to building, it's perfectly fine to do this. It's a very easy way to make good builds and show that you're making progress. Right here, you can see I've now made a porch by extending the foundation. Even though it's a bit more work, it's definitely worthwhile. And then I essentially made a second balcony and a staircase up with deep sight tiles. Then a little nice chair. Well, it's really more of a couch. I forgot the name of these, but eh. And then it's hanging by chains, some fences with fence gates in order to mix it up. And what do you know, we have a lot of the front of the build. Although it's technically segmented, you can see how it's not all uniform, which keeps it unique. Later on, we might want to add some decorated pots. For the roof, notice I included some stairs in order to give it a little bit of damage without doing too much to the actual structure. And yeah, this is pretty easy. All you need to do is go in and replace the occasional block. And what do you know, your roof is now not perfect and therefore objectively better. You can make a little holes like this but you're also going to have to go on the inside and make a proper roof for the interior. Right here, I included some pillars. I recommend actually using spruce rather than dark oak because it meshes better with dark oak planks. Once you do that, you do some dark oak stairs surrounding them like that, and then a log across here as a support beam, and then you cover up all the crimson on the inside with spruce or whatever block you chose to make your walls out of. And what do you know, it's a little claustrophobic right now, but some stairs later, lowering the roof a little, and what do you know, it's dark, but it's definitely ready. Don't forget to include your windows, I recommend a pink, magenta, purple, and if need be, blue gradient. However, I'm not using, gonna, I'm not gonna use blue. So, you can see here, on the corner, well, it's three blocks here, and I make a simple window. For the second floor, if you plan to include some sort of tower, I recommend using dark oak stairs on the edges, and then spruce slabs to hide the birch that the second floor will be made of. This will be the bedroom area of the build, and potentially somewhere down here, I might use some deep sight tiles, but that might be for the basement where I'm going to have furnaces and storage. Essentially, what you want to do is continue decorating the walls using complex dark oak patterns like this. Continue it all around, don't forget about this rounded piece here, and then you can mirror the sides if you need to, like you can have an identical window here and here. Although, if you can, try to make it a bit asymmetrical. Right here, you can see that the roof is here, and the walls are decorated. Although they're partially segmented, still, I make sure to use the shape to make it unique enough. Then, I do the windows. Added some trapdoors to make those not as flat, along with a random wooden thing that I don't know the purpose of. And what do you know? This build is looking really good. Along with these little decorations down here with the stairs and slabs. Feel free to pause if you need to copy, but otherwise, this house is coming along very well. And in here, you can see some lanterns were added too, and the ceiling was as well. And then, you can take the ladder, but you have to make a jump for it. And you can go to the second floor. You might want to do a third floor, or you could make the roof right here. It's up to you. I think it would potentially be a little bit easier to make the roof here. So, you should try out both methods. Do you want to make the roof right here, or do you want to make another floor? There isn't really a pro or con to it besides the build's going to look vastly different. But still, it's an interesting inclusion. As for the interior, don't forget that decorated pots exist including one with a potion symbol. And then, for some of the other stuff, put down your basic survival utilities. The basement can be added, and I recommend using tough walls, but it may or may not be relegated to a second tutorial coming next week, which is going to be for a different build, so keep an eye out for a secret lab tutorial, since that's likely going to mishmash the basement into it. Either way, put in standard survival interior, and see whether you want to make another floor, or if you want to make a roof here. 
Right here is a little example of what it will look like if you have a roof. It's only one quarter because I used structure box and world edit to speed up this video's production. Somehow it still ended up delayed. But now with this roof in place, you can see if you want to make a second floor, well a third floor technically, or if you think you like this look currently. If you do, then continue on with the instructions given in the last clip. Essentially, if you want to build this style of roof, you start off exactly like this roof except you make it in a cone. Where you go up, you have your stairs, more stairs, and then once you get to a certain point, you need to make the decision once it's one block thin here, you're gonna have this. And obviously, we can't make this work because not only, well, it doesn't match up later on, but also because that doesn't fit when you include all four sides, which means you have to place a block behind it. From there, use your intuition to determine where the blocks need to go, where you can see it gets smaller and smaller as you go up until it goes to a point right here. And once you have all that copied, then you can do your interior safely and you can do an optional basement if you want. I decided to make a quick rudimentary basement idea so that way you can fill it up later on. Right here, you can see that I've added something to the outside, trees. Initially, I thought, hmm, I don't need those and I don't want to make an entire fir tree tutorial or at least not for this, but it turns out placing giant trees nearby using 2x2 two two spruce works perfectly fine for nighttime. You can see how this really adds to the vibe even with the podzol. And for a quick daytime look, because I've been told that, wow, command failure, but anyways, I've been told it's a little dark sometimes in my videos, so sorry about that. But here's what it looks like during the day, and now for the interior. You can see basic utilities, the funny dragon egg modern lamp that does not fit the vibe at all, and a bunch of other miscellaneous things around the build. I include a candelabra, well no, that's a chandelier, what am I thinking? But I include one of those, and then I incorporate looms facing away for the bookshelf right there. Nice chair, hiding the ender chest in the mysteriously purple particled box. And then if I go up here, note the stairs. Well, here's the bedroom. I have a hanging shroom light covered in crimson. And you can see where I filled up the, in the inside of the roof. And of course, the roof is done, nice and damaged. And now the build really has this vibe to it. And yeah. If you look around, you can see the little things I do. Of course, I can't cover every last thing, but these are actually stairs that are waterlogged. No need to have to go outside or place down water every time you need to do brewing. And now, the interior is done and it's time for the basement. Of course, time constraints because a lot of real life things happen during this. So, right here, you can see I have a bunch of trap doors. Close them, pretty much normal floor if I remember to close them. And then I can go downstairs, perfectly fine. Pretty dark, you can see where I originally intended to make a giant tower for the build. Yeah, a lot of things happened during the design process. But anyways, what you want to do is go in, remove anything you have down here, and then you want to go one block inward and go one block lower than your ground layer. Something like this. And then make the floor something basic. Maybe you want to do basalt or in blackstone combined, something like that. And then for the walls, you'll probably want to do a gradient. And what I mean by this is grab a few pretty universal blocks. I mean, a lot of these blocks right here can be used in a lot of different things. So imagine something like this, where you can make a simple gradient for your build. And what do you know, this is much more interesting than the normal stone wall. Do this throughout the walls down here, it depends on how crazy you want to get. I'm going to build a very small basement, maybe going into a little bit of this area, but otherwise nothing too crazy. And if you use this wall design here, what do you know, you'll have something more interesting than plain cobblestones, plain stone, plain bricks, etc. Right here, you can see I have the basement. Don't forget cobwebs, right here I used 6 lecterns in order to make an open coffin, and then I have some chests around in a supposedly normal arrangement. Seriously, you guys don't play with over 100 chests? Supposedly I am the odd one out. 
Yeah, apparently nobody has this many chests. But anyways, back to the tutorial and not me showing off my survival world. In this room, I played a little bit more with the lighting. I only have candles here, and I could add lanterns there, but otherwise, nothing besides this corner over here needs anything. So, just a few candles here. And now, I can keep that nice moody vibe in here. And yeah, with this little cauldron here in order to make it look like some sort of weird witch's experiment, mad scientist, etc. Well, this build is almost done. Yeah, not quite done yet. There's something finally left to do. This path here. I made a simple forking path, nothing too interesting, and there isn't multiple so it's not any garden of forking paths. No minotaurs unfortunately. But what we want to do here is plant some pumpkins, add some sparse podzol and mushrooms, and then a few headstones. You can put some funny jokes on the headstones or you can leave them bare, but put some coarse dirt in front of them. Right here, I've added some typical Halloween decorations, some tombstones, then a larger one, pumpkins, growing pumpkins, a scarecrow, a singular out of place bush, and then a sign terracotta rock with a skull on it. Then I added some cobbled deep slate to the pathways, and what do you know, I now have a completed haunted house. Well really, I'm not even sure what to call this anymore. I wanted it to be a haunted house and then it turned into a cottage, but either way, the build is complete. You can see here, you have that little build up to it, it's a nice house, it has that Hershey Kiss looking top, and even though it's not completely encompassed with those front decorations, you can easily add them if the terrain permits. And my point has gotten across anyways, you can see how to do it, and then you can go up, build the house, you can see the little things I do, and of course, pause if you need a closer look at anything. Make sure to include cracked blocks in there. And then, with all this in mind, you even get a basement to boot, in case you need the extra storage. With that out of the way, well, you now have a haunted cottage. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.